imagine a world where no music was playing. No need to worry, as Teddy Thompson has just released his new album, My Love of Country. As the title suggests, Teddy revisits classic country songs made popular by the likes of Dolly Parton, Ray Charles, and Eddie Arnold, along with one track written by his parents, Richard and Linda Thompson. We find Teddy, who has just rushed home after playing tennis. Here he is to tell us how he and his friend David put this record together. I have a, a friend named David Mansfield who produced this record, who is a, a legendary guy, starts out playing with Dylan and yeah, I saw the everybody. Rolling Thunder re review, and he was in it. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. That's so, um, <laughs> wow, wow, yeah, he was just a kid. So it, it, was, um, it came about because, uh, yeah, we were, I was wondering what I could do with myself during the pandemic, and David has a studio, and it just seemed like a, you know, it seemed like a fun idea. I mean, I guess, I, you know, I, with, without wanting to get too, too deep about it, I mean, I guess it was, you know, during the pandemic, there was a lot of sort of like, you know, what what could I do? What would be the most joyful thing for me to do musically? Because, you know, uh, my grandmother used to say, you know, if you want something, if you want something done, ask a busy person. And um, during the pandemic, I had no like, you know, many artists actually, you know, people would say, oh, you've got this time to write and do things, but it doesn't work that way. When uh -huh. you have nothing to do and you're lying around and, it, and you're kind of down, you don't write anything. You're not productive at all. Um, so yeah, I didn't really have a bunch of songs I wanted to record of my own. And so I thought, what could I do that would be really fun? And really, I guess when I think about it, country is sort of my first musical love. It's the first thing I really, um, really pricked up my ears when I was a kid. And, and so I always come back to it, I think. And, um, and so I just thought, well, this is, the, this is what I would, this is what I would like to do for fun. Right. So how did country become your first love? It seems well, Un unlikely <laughs> it, well yes unlikely um well blame i blame the parents there you uh, go That's what they're i for. was um <laughs> yeah you know my parents didn't you know like as as now i know as a musician you know they they you know their day job was playing um you know folk folk rock music in english folk, folk rock music and the last thing they wanted to listen to when they came home was English folk music. Yeah, and they yeah, yeah. didn't. That's not why I heard at home. They listened to to um, a lot of great stuff. You know, very Catholic taste in music, which is something I think I inherited, which I'm great, very grateful for. Um, right. Just anything and everything. But there was a lot of country music, and I'm sure there were other things too. But as I said, it was I for some reason it was that was the thing that they played. There was we had tapes in the car on car journeys, and my dad had a few tapes and I'm sure he was playing other things but what I remember is the Everly Brothers and Hank Williams that was the first thing that I that I went whoa I'd, I'd play that again yeah so that's just what what's what what um snared me right and speaking of your dad you do one of his songs I'll regret it all in the morning it's a pretty dark <laughs> song why that one whiskey helps clear my head Bring it with you into bed If I beat you nearly dead I'll regret it all in the morning Yeah, there, it was a combination of, um, of, of um, there was a few songs that, that David and I, you know, agreed upon and knew that we wanted to do, like that we both had in mind. And then there was a few, and then the rest of them, we just, we sort of went away and tried to find some interesting songs that people didn't know too well. And, yep. and so, but sometime in that process, I was listening to um, a box set of my mom and dad that had come out that someone gave me, I think it's on Hannibal. So it was a bunch of records and outtakes from that mid seventies period and, yep. and Hokey Pokey is, was on there. And so it was just that song. I just, it sort of, felt a bit like a country song to me and I don't know it was right. it was in my mind and when we when I was looking for songs and I just decided that would be a that would be that would be an interesting one to do did you get any feedback from either one of them on your version no well I mean my mom loves the record but my mom loves everything I do oh, well, that's what she's there for. <laughs> that's what she's there for. 
she really does. I mean, as you know, <clears throat> she is a musician, and and I would like to imagine yeah. that she has, you know, I mean, I know that she has good taste in music, but I don't know if she's objective about me at all. <laughs> right. My dad hasn't. I don't think my dad has heard it yet. So, okay. um, so that so that should be interesting. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll get an angry phone call. I don't know. <laughs> I, I doubt it. <laughs> um, so, how did you and David? You say, you say you had discussions about songs and whatever. How did you work together in, in, in putting this record together? Well, that was the great fun of it because you know, as I said, it was let's have fun. Let's let's yeah. let's make this country record. How do how sh let's do it in like the most fun way we could imagine, which is also the way that most of these records were made, these 50s and 60s and even 70s yeah. country songs in Nashville, which is to say that um, we, you know, he, we had charts, he wrote out charts. We, we decided exactly how the songs would go. Um, and he as the producer wrote out charts and then we hired great musicians and they come in and they just read the charts and it, it's very, and they, everybody plays in the room at the same time. Nice, nice. And that was, that's the joy of it. That's the joy of making music with other musicians to me is to do it together. So it's, um, it's great fun. It is the old fashioned way of doing things, but it's, it's become, it's come back into fashion because it's, um, it's also the cheapest and fastest way to do things. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have record budgets anymore to spend weeks in no. the studio talking about arrangements. <laughs> like we just, we, we only had, we the tracking was only like two and a half days. We did sort of five songs a day. Right. Cool. Cool. So, uh, is it intimidating to take on a song that has been become iconic and has, I mean, like "Crying Time" or "You Don't Know Me"? Uh, all you can as soon as I hear those titles, I hear Ray Charles's voice in my head. Yes, yeah, annoying, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Stop. Yeah. That. Well, I hear Ray Charles's voice in my head almost every day, so it's it's That's fine right. by me. But yes, I take your point. I um yeah, there was a few a few of those songs, as you say, like uh, "Crying Time" and also "A Picture of Me Without You" is just yeah. an epic one. Yep. Yep. They're definitely they're definitely big songs to take on, and I don't think I would have done them twenty years ago or even ten years ago. Uh -huh. So, but I, but I was um yeah, I felt. Like that was kind of exciting too. I felt like I could sing those songs now at mm. this point in my life. I have the, I have the life, I have half a lifetime of uh, misery to draw upon. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. We, you're only in your mid forties. Is that correct? Somewhere yeah. in there? Yeah. So you got yeah. a lot of way to go. <laughs> Plenty a lot of misery to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> uh, so, so when you were, uh, and is that um, David playing the accordion on Crying Time? Oh, it's crying time again, you're gonna leave me I can see that far away look in your eyes I can tell by the way you hold me, darling That it won't be long before it's crying time It is. David is playing, and this, I, I you know, I... I cannot stress enough how um, exceptional this is, but David is playing everything other than the bass and the drums and the piano, basically. Right, In fact, that's right, it, right. everything, every single thing. So we track the songs live with those bass drums, everybody in the room and the piano player yep. and me playing yep. guitar and him playing one of the guitar parts. And then everything else is him. He overdubbed everything else, which is unbelievable. I didn't, I mean, I don't think he even plays the accordion, but. He just, um, I, he just did it. He just figured it out, learned it. <laughs> how, did, how does that happen? <laughs> how, does, how does that happen? It's, it's brilliant. And you've got a few friends uh, singing along with you. Rodney Crowell's on Crying Time, I think. And yeah, so did you just kind of invite them in? Did they do it remotely? How did that work? They, they didn't even remotely do it. Um, no, they did remotely do it. They, right. um, yeah, that was that was a big, um, that was a big thrill for me. We. We, um, yeah, we made, you know, we did the record, we did the tracks, we did a bunch, he did a bunch of overdubs. And then without, um, then we realized we, that there were a lot of songs that needed harmony vocals and that yeah. they shouldn't be me singing with myself. So we, we ended up with, yeah, you know, five songs that really desperately needed other voices. And um, at least four of those, uh, uh, yeah, we needed that that um, high tenor country thing, which is um, yeah. 
which is, um, you know, all over those old records, but kind of hard to find these days. And so, yeah, it was thanks to David. He, um, he said, you know, well, he knows Rodney. I didn't know Rodney. I just met him in Nashville. He came and sang um, at the show. And, um, and then, you know, he said, well, you know who would be great is Vince Gill. And I'm like, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so why, you know. Um, and David doesn't know Vince, but he knew someone that knew him. And he just got his number and called him up. And, and I think Vince knew who David is. And, yeah. um, and being the nice people that Nashville musicians are, I mean, they're yeah. so nice. They're just, you know, you can call anybody, you just pick up the phone and they're just regular people. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, this, and so David sent Vince three songs and said, would you consider singing on one of these songs? And Vince wrote back, I'll sing on all of them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which was, I, I'm st I still can't get over it. Very cool. Now I see yeah. you dug up a, a kind of a rarity, a Dolly Parton tune called love and learn, which mm. uh, isn't, you know, one of her big hits, so to speak. So how did you come across that one? Love and learn. I, well, I think I, I mean, I've, I, I've not had that song for ages, but, you know, I mean, I, I think I probably have listened to everything that Dolly Parton's ever done, really, right. pretty much um, at some point. So I, I had that song in the back of my mind. It was on some box set or something, um, and it just stood out to me. It's such a good song. Uh, and I, I think I'm right in saying that it was quite early, Dolly, and even, you know, there's there was a little... Um, period where she was doing before where she was almost doing kind of pop stuff before she right. was real country so there's there's a box set out there that i have it's i'm sure it's on itunes and stuff now too but there's a bunch of um tracks some of them released and some of them unre unreleased that are very poppy like early 60s almost like girl group you know like yeah. like um yep. phil spectre -ish. there's some really cool stuff and this one's not quite all the way in that direction but it's um it's not quite straight ahead country pure country yet and it was yeah a great song and it was written by her uncle bill bill owens who she wrote some songs with early in her career cool cool and i know uh, it's interesting so, some of these songs like a satisfied mind had have been recorded by like dylan and elvis and all these folks so they're they're quite a canon to choose from and have you listened to other people's versions of other uh, of some of these songs even not yeah, I mean, not not in preparation to record them. So in fact, right. the opposite. I'm like, oh, I don't want to listen to Ray yeah, Charles yeah, yeah. of this right before I do it. I'll I'll <laughs> I'll never get through it. Why would you know? But you know, I and I um yeah, but I I certainly heard plenty of them. But I um yeah, again, you know, I, I we can thank my parents because I grew up with the with the message, at least in music, when the the song was the most important thing. You know, that is obviously yep. the British tradition and the folk tradition in general is is song, song, song. It's all about the song, right? Good song. Songs are important, and songs just get you know everybody does them. Good song gets you know um, dozens of people will record it, and that was certainly true of country songs too for a long, long time. It was not unusual. For many people to to record uh, to cut um, songs, and so yeah, I, I I approached it from that angle rather than thinking, well, you know, I can't do better than Ray Charles. It's not, you know, right, yeah. that's that's not that's not really the 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 approach to have. It's more that I just you know these are great songs and they should be recorded by as many people as possible, and I'm just yep. going to be one of them. Very, very good. <laughs> so your previous album was what? Heartbreaker, Please, with, back in 2020 of original material. Yeah. So are, do you now have uh, songs that you've been writing since then? Yeah, now I've got loads of songs. And, and okay. so I'll, I'll have to make another record. But, you know, again, it's um, it's um, how how to do it. I yeah, I still, you know, I still I do I do miss the days of big record budgets. And I, I was, sure. you know. 
I'm old enough to have experienced the end of the the yeah. um, mega um, music business record deals, and and it was fun to um, have all these possibilities and producers and and fancy studios. And now, you know, like so many artists, when you finish a batch of songs, you have to sit down and think, okay, how can I do this the way I want to do it, but without spending very much money. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And so uh, it's hard to marry those two things, you know, doing what you want, doing it, doing it right, um, but not, um, you know, can't afford the London Philharmonic anymore. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, but I suppose technology kind of takes care of some of that, but it also mm -hmm. kind of takes away from the, the, the feeling that you can get as well. Indeed, so. indeed. Yes, it's it's um, it's 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 a double edged sword and it can be it, it's definitely useful, but um, it um, we, it's, you have to, we have to be careful. We don't lean on it too much. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, have you ever played down in New Zealand? I, I don't remember seeing. I that. have been to New Zealand once and when I was playing in Rufus Wainwright's band. OK, I think that would have been about 12 or 13 years ago. Right. So, but I, I think I'm right in saying we only came to Auckland. That sounds that right. It. Yeah. Yeah. I might have even gone to that show. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I have to look yeah. I love New Zealand. I love, love New Zealand. And I love, you know, one of my big, one of my favorite bands of all time who was, were, were a big influence on me because they were sort of happening when I was, you know, a teenager um, is um, Crowded House. Oh, right. And, sure. Well, Neil Finn's studio is right around the corner from me here. Oh my God! <laughs> I see him out jogging quite often. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Stop him and stop him and tell him I love him. I will. I'll let. Yeah, he'll run away. <laughs> he'll run away. Hey, well, actually, I, New Zealand is the kind of place like Nashville. Everyone yes. knows everybody. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can't get away, so you just have to kind of yeah. get along with everybody. It's great. Mm. Now, I, uh, the other, uh, we just had a huge country show here in Auckland by a guy named Luke Coombs who is a huge star, but uh, from, uh, from you know, and it played to like 12,000 people. And so country music is kind of making this strange, it's, it's like underground music, but it's not because the place was packed and everyone there knew every word to every song. But for those of us who are kind of hipper than thou, uh, we were like, who is this guy? And why are all these people no singing his songs? So is there a is there a stigma attached to country music these days or something? Because you hear all sorts of things about, you know, the South and there's there's what's his name? Uh, Jason Aldean having his issues with that. So do you have thoughts about the status of country music? Yeah, well, yeah it's very there's a lot going on there. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was that loaded yeah. one. <laughs> There's a lot going on. I mean, really, there's, there's, yeah, it's, it, there's sort of two things happening in Nashville. There's, there's what people now people call country music now, which is the very mainstream. What those more the more cynical among us would call bro country, yeah, um, yeah, which is very, which is you know not to my taste at all. Very you know, very um pop, very sanitized, very um you know stadium y you know I, and I don't know a lot of the names that people are selling out stadiums yeah. I've never heard of. I'd never heard of yep. Jason yep. Aldean until he got into uh, all this trouble. But um yeah it, that doesn't that's not on my radar at all really. And then the other side of Nashville, what I think you know p p you know what those of us that who like old older country um there's there's Americana they call that yes. th that kind of well, I went to Americana fest last year at Nashville, yeah Americana sure. is like you know so I don't really but I, I Americana is, is not really this kind of country music either this kind meaning the stuff that's no. on my record um, that's for sure yeah I yeah it's it's not so I, I have no idea where this fits in it probably doesn't fit in which is par for the course for me whatever I do <laughs> the least commercial yep. venture. Um, of the year every time, but yeah, I don't know. Country music—it's—it's it's a weird, it's a strange thing. I mean, the the name is you know like all um, uh, labels, it become they start to lose meaning and it becomes hard to to uh, understand what that is. I don't know what the word country means for for country music anymore. It's probably different things to different people. I still love to think of you know to call country music this stuff, you know, like Hank Williams and yep. and yeah. and. Um, 
and all of this stuff and Willie Nelson and Johnny Cash, that's country music to me, but I know it's not to a lot of people. So I, your guess is as yeah, good as mine. Yeah. I've never heard of these people either. Yeah, like this Luke Combs guy. I mean, it was to, to me, it sounded like classic rock. It's I could have been a Leonard Skinner show, and it would have been. Yeah, it does. It sounds like it. it's it not a bad thing. Like, it's just a thing. Yeah, yeah, it sounds <laughs> more like that to me. It sounds very, very like rock music. And and without wanting to get too deeply into it, it's also like almost all music now. It's actually really rap based, R and B based. It all yep. starts with with um, a beat. You know, country, yep. like mainstream country is the same thing as all the others. There's beat makers and and it's um, that's the basis. It's not it's no longer the basis of most commercial music is no longer rock and roll. It's rap. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. All righty. Well, well, listen to see if there's any beats in your next album. There's right? no beats. There's no not beats. In this one, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Fantastic. All righty. Well, good luck on Friday with the record coming out. Uh, thank you very much for sharing all of this with me. Oh, beautiful. And very good. Right. Thank you very much. Good luck. And thank you. Oh, come on down sometime. I'd love to. I'll try. <laughs> hey, bye bye. Thank you.